Bestbookbits.com brings you the book summary of Lead the Field by Earl Nightingale. If the grass is greener on the other side, it's probably getting better care. Success is not a matter of luck or circumstance. It's not a matter of fate or the breaks you get or who you know. Success is a matter of sticking to a set of common sense principles anyone can master. In Lead the Field, Earl Nightingale explains these guidelines. The magic word in life is attitude. It determines your actions as well as the actions of others. It tells the world what you expect from it. When you accept responsibility for your attitude, you accept responsibility for your entire life. Earl Nightingale, the Dean of Development, offers you a treasure trove of uplifting and insightful information like the importance of forgiveness, how intelligent objectivity can improve your professional life, the usefulness of constructive discontent, Now it's your turn to bring positive changes to your life, changes that will allow you to lead the field yourself. About the author, Earl Nightingale was a famous orator in the United States, and as an example of what self-education can do for someone who starts without penny of things going against him. Born in 1921, raised by his mother, who was left alone with his two brothers, he grew up poor in Los Angeles suburb in the middle of the Depression. Wishing to understand why some people are poor and miserable and others are not, and not finding anyone in his acquaintance who could answer. He began his quest for the answers and knowledge in the local library, which would lead him particularly to a study of philosophy, psychology, and great religions for decades. After the war, during which he survived with 12 Marines, an attack on the battleship USS Arizona at Pearl Harbor, 1,103 dead out of 1,000 511 crew members. He worked in radio and created one of the first audiobooks, The Strangest Secret, which is a bestseller and sold more than a million copies. I've done a summary on this as well on the channel, so check it out through there. He went on to found, with Lloyd Conant, the Nightingale Conant Corporation, the first company to offer audio cassettes about personal development. He died in 1989. On with the book summary, lead the field. Introduction. Our daily environment is a merciless reflection of ourselves. Everyone we meet and come in contact with every day will always read in response to our attitude. And we can control this attitude every morning when we start our day. If we are cheerful, happy, and enjoy the miracle of life, others will return this cheerfulness and good humor. We will be the kind of person that others like to have around them. Test it. Treat each person that you come in contact with as the most important person on earth, you will quickly see the difference that it creates. Acres of Diamonds In the 19th century, an African farmer heard stories about the success of other farmers who had made millions by discovering diamond mines. Excited by the prospect, he sold his farm and took off in search of diamonds, a long and fruitless search that left him alone and penniless in the end. He threw himself into a river and drowned. The man who bought the farm noticed a blue and red shiny stone one day at the bottom of a brook. He picked it up, finding it very pretty, he placed it on the mantle. Some days later, a visitor picked it up, went pale, and told the farmer that the stone he had picked up was an enormous diamond. The farmer, astounded, told the visitor and his brook was full of stones like that. The farm that the first farmer had sold to go in search for diamonds turned out to be the one of the most productive diamond mines on the African continent. He had sold it for a mouthful of bread to search elsewhere for something that was in front of his nose all along. He would have known that had he taken the time to prepare himself and learn what a diamond in the rough looks like. What does that tell you? That we all have diamond fields. We only have to recognize them and exploit them. We all have diamond fields. We only need to recognize them and exploit them. All you need is patience and wisdom to explore intelligently and effectively the work you are already doing. Everything we do is rich with opportunity, but the opportunities don't glow in the dark and are not written on neon signs. In order to spot them, you have to look with new eyes. All too often, we don't question what already exists because if millions of people are doing it, it must be the best way to do it, but it's not the best way. It's the average ordinary way. To put it into practice, begin by taking an hour a day 
with a notebook to sketch out your work. Try to see with new eyes and examine all the ingredients, opportunities are there, fields of diamonds. A worthy destination. The United States is overflowing with immigrants who come here to escape appalling conditions in their countries, who all started over from nothing with everything against them, without wealth, without knowledge in the language, without material possessions, and who have succeeded in a remarkably short amount of time. And this was a wonderful experience for them, filled with happiness. Why? Because freedom is the most precious thing, and the most rare thing on earth. By coming to the United States, they have been able to taste it and intoxicate themselves on something that is taken for granted by most naturally born Americans. So it is with all our desires. Once we have realized them, enjoying them on a daily basis, becomes something we take for granted, and they lose a great deal of their interest and their magic. It is desire, more than realizing desire, that makes us happy. Children are the happiest on Christmas morning, when the wrapped presents await them under the tree, then once the surprise and suspense is over, we are happier going to the restaurant than coming home. Happier when we are leaving on a vacation than when we return. And we are happier when we are pursuing our goals relentlessly than when we have reached them. Success is the progressive accomplishment of an objective that is worth the effort. I'll say this again, super important. Success is the progressive accomplishment of an objective that is worth the effort. Success lies in the journey towards the objective, the desire, rather than the objective itself, the accomplishment. Don't waste our resources and our precious and limited time on useless objectives. Let's define worthwhile objectives. According to Earl Nightingale, only 5% of the population succeed in attaining success that is out of the ordinary. For the rest, average is a good thing. Therefore, it is important to set worthwhile goals and to set more once you reach them. Every day of our lives, we should be engaged, advancing, and learning and looking out for higher heights from which to set out again. But in order to do so, you must know what you want. You will become whatever you think of yourself. You will become whatever you think of yourself. Miracles of your mind. We are the only species on earth to be endowed with the power to shape our lives in accordance with the images we see in our mind. Everything that has been done by humans is a result of following goals and objectives. On a more individual level, everything we have, our work, our relationships with our family and others, our philosophy of life, is a result of the use we have put our mind to. Now scientists think that we use average about only 10% of our brain capacity. If everything you've accomplished up until now is thanks to only 10% of your brain, what do you think we could achieve if we were to use 20%? Now, unfortunately, schools do not teach us to think, and it is by thinking that we will find creative solutions for how to make better use of our brain and its awesome power. There is a simple way to make better use of our brain. Every day, take a piece of paper, write at the top our primary objective, then write underneath all the ideas that come into our head to help reach this goal. Do this for an hour. We can easily come up with about 20 ideas a day on paper. Some of these ideas won't be feasible or practical, but even if we only do this five days a week, 40 weeks a year, we'll have 4,000 ideas at our disposal to help us reach our goals. And this will only have taken us 200 hours out of 8,760. If we subtract about 2,920 hours for sleep and about 1,645 hours for work, that leaves 3,995 leisurely hours. Never in the history of humanity have we had so much time to devote to things other than work. Using 5% of our supplemental free time to think could completely change our lives. A single big idea could revolutionize our work or our entire lives. One out of 4,000 or 40,000, one big idea every 10 years would be more than enough. Destiny in the balance. Our rewards in life are always in accordance with the services we perform. Our rewards in life are always in accordance with the services we perform. It is a universal and general law, the law of cause and effect. 
services include our thoughts, our work, our actions, our words. Before looking for rewards, we must reflect upon our services and improve them. This law appears simple, and yet it is, for the most part, misunderstood and ignored by all. There are so many people who lean against a mantle where the fire has gone out in a freezing room and say, give me a light and I'll put wood on the fire. People whine because they receive bad service or bad treatment when the problem comes from their service to themselves, which is not worthy of the rewards they expect. Rather than worrying about what the future will bring, we would be better off using our wasted energy to find and improve our services, to improve ourselves by thinking of the best ways to do so. But so many people will do. I don't know what in this world, even resorting to crime, before they will think. Seed for achievement. The seed for achievement is integrity. Integrity is honesty and truth with others and yourself. If we are at peace with ourselves, we cannot be false towards others. If our words can carry integrity, our sleep will not be troubled and we will be respected everywhere we go. There is nothing we cannot accomplish if we live by this principle from the inside out. To be honest with oneself implies taking responsibility to use what we have to the utmost and what we have, our underutilized mind, our abilities, our talents, and our time. These are our possessions, which we carry with us everywhere, which represent a huge fortune. It is the investment of this fortune which determines our return on investment. It is what makes us autonomous human beings, even though most people are not aware of this. In order to respect our integrity and to be honest and true to ourselves, we must do our best in every circumstance, therefore. Life is a piece of fertile land, which is waiting for us to sow our seeds in it. It cannot return anything if you do not plant it. It's easier to win. Only 5% of people succeed in reaching an unusual goal. These are the people that earn the highest salaries, who live in the best part of town, the most comfortable houses, have the best education, the good things of life, and make the greatest contribution to their communities. The average man or average woman grows up imitating their environment. They think like all their friends think. They take the life they live for granted. Everyone they like is in the same group. They are in this group as well. And as long as they are not usually motivated to leave it, they will become an indistinguishable member of it. They do this because it is natural to do it. The group's objectives or lack of objectives become their own. It requires their minimum ability all the years of their life. It is not necessary because all the industrialized countries are so rich and dynamic that the majority of people don't need to shift into second or third gear to reach a decent standard of living. No one has ever told this young man or this young woman, hey look, there are two very different groups in our society. There are different layers in the socio-economic pyramid. Here is the 5% at the top of the pyramid. Now this is what we call the middle class, and it is divided into two main groups. At the bottom, you find the lower class, those who, for innumerable reasons, need help from everyone else. Now look, we are living here, at this level of the pyramid. It is neither the highest nor the lowest in society. That is where I want it to be, and your mother and I are perfectly happy here. And where do you want to be? Where do you want to be? People who succeed follow an independent path. At some moment in their life, they decide to leave the cocoon of their social group and set out on their own path. And it is easier to win there. There is less competition higher up. Again, there is less competition higher up. How much are you worth? Every human life is precious, but the tangible and intangible payments that we receive in life vary a great deal. We are all unique, but what are the services that we offer? Think of yourself as a company. You are the president of the company and you are responsible for its success or failure. You and the members of your family are shareholders in the company and it is your responsibility to increase the value of the shares year after year. Your family has faith in you and invest a great deal in you, and it's up to you to prove that their faith is justified. A complicated company can be divided into four departments. Number one, financial. Two, production. 
three, sales, and four, research. Take away one of these ingredients and the company is destined more or less to failure in the long run. Don't neglect these four parameters for ourselves. Research is the most commonly ignored operation. You would be surprised by the enormous number of people who stop learning once school is over. Other than company manuals and technical documentation, they read only a very small number of books of any real value. Well, knowledge is power. Let's talk about money. Someone who has specialized skills in our society is worth more money than a person with basic skills that can be easily replaced. That doesn't mean that he is more important from a strictly humanistic point of view, just that his services are better paid. A janitor is just as important from a human point of view as a neurosurgeon, but he is more easily replaced. Anyone can be trained to clean floors in a few days or weeks, while a neurosurgeon has spent many years learning his profession, often at the price of great personal sacrifice and at great expense, and it cannot be easily replaced. Thus, the neurosurgeon can earn more in a day than the janitor makes in a year. Therefore, what we earn is related to what we can give and what is asked. But how much do we want to earn? There are two steps to reach the level of income that we want. Number one, decide how much money we really want, the exact amount. And number two, once you have made the decision, you must forget about the money and concentrate on improving what we are doing and the services we are offering. One thing you can't hide. Knowledge intelligently applied is power and everyone needs knowledge. And in this information age, to an unprecedented degree in the history of humanity, a person's degree of ignorance will determine his place in the world. Everyone is born ignorant and must, for a moment, live in ignorance. But all those who remain ignorant can only blame themselves. People who lead the field are at the top 5% of the pyramid and those who know the most. They have a better command of the language and send their children to the best schools than most of the population. This might seem surprising, but a correlation exists between the quality of your spoken language and the number of words you know with your social and economic success. Actually, a good command of the language is an asset in every aspect of your life. Language immediately reveals certain things about us, and notably, our socio-cultural level and where we belong on the social pyramid. Language indicates the social status to which we belong. Reader's Digest published an article by Blake Clark entitled, Words Can Work Wonders For You, in which he reports on a scientific study of 350,000 people showing a surprising correlation between vocabulary levels and the richness of language and economic and social success. So it is important to develop your vocabulary and use language that is varied accurate and relevant. Therefore, it is important to develop your knowledge in the general area that naturally interests us. We are all interested in something. Read books to learn more about that subject area, but also for fun. Begin a systematic study in your field of interest. Finally, a personal quality library is essential for success. Today's greatest adventure. A life is made up of days which become weeks, months, and years. Let's reduce that to the least common denominator, one day, and finally one task in that day. This day is a brick which you will use to build a house. Sometimes we see a builder start to build a wall, brick by brick, and we think that the amount of work left for him to do. And then one day, some weeks or some months later, a whole house is standing in the place where the builder was working. Thus it is in our lives. If we place each of our stones successfully, we will be able to build a magnificent tower. To get into the habit of success, the only thing to do is succeed in the little tasks that we assign ourselves each day. Try out this idea every day. Write down on a piece of paper six important tasks for that day. Then rate them in orders of importance. Then do them one by one. If you don't get to the last ones, let it be and put it on tomorrow's list. This method will allow you to stop worrying about tomorrow. You can relax, happy in the knowledge that successful tasks means successful days and makes a successful life. The person on the white horse. To lead the field, 
it is important that we are leaders in our own lives, and also that our services are important and are irreplaceable that others come to us for them. For that, we must specialise and become believable in a specific area of our work, become a vital part of the organisation which we are in. Humans are born with God-like power to determine their path in life. It is all about your attitude to guarantee success in life. We can control our attitude and what we present to others is a reflection back to them. Our attitude towards life determines life's attitudes towards us, cause and effect, and must first start with us, not others. We get back what we put out. Our surroundings will always reflect us. Our environment is a mirror of ourselves, our attitude and expectations. Great attitude equals great results. It's like a magnet, self-generating and fulfilling prophecy. Human beings can alter their lives by altering their attitudes and mind. Those who are successful expect more good than bad out of life. They expect to succeed more often than they fail, and they do. We must be the epitome of and radiate success before we can become successful. Before you can do something, you need to be something. Act as the person you wish to become. Treat each person you come in contact with as the most important person on earth. Don't allow others' negative attitudes to affect you, as they are infectious. Forgive and forget it. Rise above it. Life is too short. Success is a natural progression and realization towards a worthy ideal or goal. We are happiest when we are fully engaged in the work we enjoy on the journey towards the goal we establish for ourselves. One thing a goal must do is to fill us with positive emotion when we think about it. It must be something we want very much to bring about. The more intensely we feel about a goal, the more assurity the idea buried deep in our subconscious will direct us along the path to its fulfillment. You get rich by enriching others. The journey of obtaining a goal is when we are most happy, not when we actually obtain it. The journey. You become what you think about. You can control your thoughts and what you think about by setting a specific goal to focus on. Look at it often, and by doing so, you'll send it to your subconscious mind. You begin to visualize yourself already having attained it, turning it into a habit for when you accomplish it, move on to the next goal. Spend an hour each weekday writing down your goal and then writing down ideas and ways to achieve or improve what you're doing to attain it. Don't spend time worrying about needless things. Only 8% of your worries are genuine. Solve the ones you can. We underestimate our abilities. We need to dig deep enough to tap into its potential. Our rewards in life will match our service. That which you sow, so shall you reap. Provide value and you'll attain all your goals. Integrity to the truth and the reasonableness is the key. Less to regret who does most for his community, whose judgment carries the most weight and is most trusted. Happiness is a byproduct of performing healthful and successful activities. Successful people follow independent paths. At some point in their lives, they break away from the crowd and start a path of their own. They join a much smaller group of like-minded people, the 5%. It's easier to win in life than to lose or to be average. It's just a matter of dismantling limited beliefs and discovering your potential that every human has and is capable of tapping into. The amount of money we receive will always be in direct ratio with the demand for what we do, our ability to do it, and the difficulty of replacing us. It's not your present circumstances which count, but the circumstances you make up your mind to achieve that is important. The only limit on your income is you. Nothing on earth can stand in the way of a plan backed by persistence and determination. Figure out each day how to bring more service to the table so that you can reach your financial goals. Having faith in yourself and the quiet, firm inner knowledge that you can and will accomplish your goals. Know that the answers you seek will come to you in their own time if you only keep looking for them. Money is an effect. The cause is valuable service. It cannot be sought directly. It's a servant and tool. Keep it 
in its place. It's good to check and ensure that you haven't lost the things that money can't buy. A mind is stretched by a new idea can never return to its original dimensions. Write down the top six most important things you need to get done. Prioritize them in order of the most important. Focus on the first one and only that one until it's completed and then move on to the next one. And last, focus on making this specific day a success. Then the next day, repeat the same process. We become successful by being a success each and every day. And that's a wrap on this amazing book, Lead the Feel by Earl Nightingale. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Now, if you want this summary via a PDF, click the link below and I'll send this straight to you via email. Now, we at Best Book Bits have done over 700 book summaries in video, written and audio format. So check us out, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Spotify and check us out at bestbookbits.com, the home of the world's largest free book summary website in video, written and audio format. Now, if you are sick and tired of reading books by yourself and trying to do life all by yourself, I have the answer. The answer is this. Join our best book club where we catch up once a week with members of the book club with our weekly Zoom book club catch up. You will meet not only new friends and authors, but you'll get books delivered to your door every single month. That is right. Books delivered to your door, weekly catch ups. You'll meet the authors directly with our monthly Q&A sessions. So click the link below or go to bestbookbits.com forward slash book club. Can't wait to meet you there. And if you need some coaching, also check the link below where I do mentoring and coaching as well. Thanks for watching and listening. Have yourself an amazing day. Go out there and lead the field and